All right, today I'm going to start knocking down uh, the filler and I'm gonna get everything hopefully straight and primed today. That's my hope, but you never know. The only thing you can do is try. All right, let's get with the back of this head. Uh, this one's, I had them made of plywood so I could distinguish the two. And uh, the other one's MDF. Uh, what I do like about plywood is that it holds a screw better than MDF. So that's probably gonna be important on this build. I might have some extra things to attach to this uh, inner side of this back panel. I might not, I don't know, but uh, I just wanna make sure I got a good anchor system in place in case I do. Now, I'm gonna wipe the back of this head, but it's not in order to get rid of this actual seam. It probably will get rid of that, that seam, but the main reason I wanna wipe the back of this head is because of this fuzziness in this open grain uh, from the cutting process. You know, no matter how much I paint or prime this thing, it's always gonna look really porous, and it's always gonna look like it's got a lot of what I would call pinholes or fish eyes in it if I don't fill this because the wood's gonna keep absorbing into these open pores in the cross cut of the wood. So that's why you'll see me do this. It's not so much to get rid of the seam because honestly, this will probably crack after it flexes around a little bit. It's not gonna crack in a, in a sense like, oh, it's cracking and it's chipping, but it'll probably just have the hairline crack around it after by the time I put it all together. It's just how it'll be. All right, let's do that.
good order. So pretty good about that. No problems there. Finish fixing this face. You know, the thing that bothers me so much about the face is, I mean, it's so unnecessary. <laughs> I mean, if somebody wouldn't, if they wouldn't try to fix it when they build it, I could just deal with it. Plug this off. I'm gonna try to detail this groove a little bit. They had a gap there I didn't like, so I'm gonna try to deal with that. And I think this thing will be ready to just kind of buzz around with the the DA real quick, and the head should be ready to go for the primer application on the custom version. is ready to prime that's one all right there's two heads ready to go so we got the custom head ready to go and we got the regular head ready to go ready to go meaning ready to prime all right now we got these lower cabinets i'm not so sure if i'll get this stuff primed today or not it always takes me a little bit longer than i think it should or will but we'll see i got a lot of things i need to do but it just depends on how how much uh, finesse work these things need. And if I don't get them primed today, then I'll just prime them tomorrow. It's not that big a deal to me. I'm in no hurry. I got to get back to my twilight zones. I'm Basically what I'm doing is twilight zones during the week and then kiss on the weekend until I get through the twilight zones. Start knocking some of this stuff down that I've already wiped. What I've wiped so far would be like the screw heads uh, where I screwed the, the playfield runners in there. Everything checked out. I fit the playfield in there so I can go ahead and get rid of those. I don't need those holes present. <laughs> Alright, what you saw me saying right there was just like the extra bondo I had just slapped on here so it wouldn't be wasted. So not the most finished looking coats were wiped on there, but now I'll be focusing a lot more on it, focusing a lot more on it. So I wanna, wanna get this a little bit more seamless. This top plate is a little bit further in than what it's resting on, and that's probably okay uh, to some people, but I, I would like for this to be nice and smooth and straight. So I want to do that. I've got a little bit of a tooth mark around this hole that I drilled. I was just getting it started, trying to figure that out. So I'll wipe that. And then other than that, just normal stuff that I always would do, like trying to make sure it's seamless and catch any little divots that might be in it. And I think that's pretty much it. I like a 40, I like one of these little 45s. You see this? I'm gonna wrap it in sandpaper. This does a really good job of getting in corners like this without trenching things. So, you know, if I hold it flat and I, I go back and forth like this, I'm gonna make a trench in it. And same thing if I do it this way, even though that seems like it would be good, you'll, you'll dig a trench in it. 
But if I hold it in a certain angle, I can just use the corner of it and not dig into anything other than the corner. And this is gonna help me get some of this glue out of here. And every so often I can hold it flat, so I'm not hurting anything. I just don't want to have it flat the whole time. All right. That one wasn't that bad. Hitting these with a half inch.
there's that. Put it upright and we'll be ready to prime. I want to move it around a lot or else it'll tear the paper. Let's get it. I'm going to suit up, put you on board, and we're going to prime this stuff.
this are our primed and guide coated. I skipped the second coat of primer with you and the guide coat. If you are curious about that, you'll see that in other videos and maybe I'll go over it when I sand it. I, I know a lot of times people are watching me work for the first time and they have questions. And a lot of times those questions have already been handled in other videos, but there it is. Two good coats of primer, a nice guide coat, nice even guide coat. And uh, tomorrow these will be ready to sand and start the painting process. I don't know if I'll do it tomorrow or not, but they will be ready at that point. So there we go with that. And uh, we're definitely off to a pretty good start at this point.